Yo, how's everybody doing today? It's your boy here, boy, and I'm back with another Fanboy Aaron review, and this time I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Generations, uh, Thrilling 30? I think he was part of the Thrilling 30, whatever, Generations Whirl. And, uh, normally I would take a look at the box, but, uh, I, I don't have this one's box. Not anymore. But hey, here's, you know what? Here's a tape, here's the tape measure I use. It's Nice, cheap-ass, Ace Hardware tape measure. Fun shit. Anyway, we're going to take a look at Whirl. He is a member of the Autobot team, The Wreckers, and one of my favorite characters from the IDW comics. And uh, this particular design isn't based on the IDW comics. However, it, it I, I, I don't know. It's... The close, it's the best world figure we have available to us at the moment. That's an affordable price. I mean, there are decent third-party worlds that look a lot more like the IDW version, but I'll settle for a G1 style world. And uh, yeah, this figure is a little old. You can probably see the little stickers. And no, uh, when you buy this guy, he does come with stickers. Mine, uh, due to the age, eh, kind of wearing out a little bit but you know they're not that bad and this is not the original Autobot symbol sticker he had I had to replace that because that one peeled off completely so yeah this is a uh, world's helicopter mode As you can see it's a it's a decent helicopter you got a little thruster back here the propellers do spin quite freely we just You can see that doesn't look half bad. It's got a transparent caramel colored cockpit. Some molded in missiles. Oh no, not a not a bad attack chopper. Not a bad attack chopper. Now uh, size comparison. Now let me move the camera a little bit. Adjust it. There we go. For size comparison, here he is with Fellow Wrecker, Springer. Now, I don't know when, but I will review this guy eventually. Now, this guy's design is based on the IDW comics. And I'll, I'll go over on how I like that when I review him. You know, when I get around to it. But yeah, here he is next to Springer. You can see they're both Voyager class size, so... They're both similar in mass. I mean, Whirl's a little thinner up top due to the fact... He's a helicopter. I mean, he turns into one, but we'll look at that in a minute. Now, I should probably do that next. But we'll we'll get we'll get to, we'll we'll get to that point eventually. All right, here he is next to uh, Generations Cyclonus with the add-on kit, which makes him look like the IDW Cyclonus. I I like the ID IDW designs. They should do more figures with those designs. But yeah, there he is next to Cyclonus. I'm not sure, but I think they have butted heads in the comics. As far as I know. Here he is with the Takara Legends Class Brawn. Also from the Generations. And uh, yeah, Brawn's a smaller guy. Here he is next to the Generations Windblade. A figure that, that also, like Springer, also came out around the same time. As you can see... Windblade's a bit smaller than Whirl. And just so you know how he compares with something a little more recent, here he is next to the Siege Deluxe Class Barricade. Yeah, uh, yeah. Police car and helicopter. I, I don't know if the scaling is correct for that or not. I don't think it is. Now, Whirl does come with a decent number of accessories, and they can all store on the vehicle mode. He comes with... What do we got here? comes with this little Gatling gun. I'm going to get the camera to focus on it. There we go. He comes with this little Gatling gun. And you know, they're all molded in a simple black plastic. Nothing too special about them. He also comes with this little missile launcher. See how that looks. Comes with this little, um, I'm not sure what this is. I, I think it's either a 
taser or a swarm missile launcher. I don't know what it's supposed to be. If anyone does, please let me know. Why is there a hinge there? There's a little pin there. I don't know what that's for. All right, and last but not least, my favorite of his weapons, this little, this little pulse cannon thing. And we'll get into why this is my favorite weapon when we get to the robot mode. Now, again, this can all store on the helicopter mode. I'll show you how that works right now. You take the Gatling gun, just plug it onto the front here. There is a little port you can plug it into. Now, it does get in the way of the landing gear, but or the landing struts, whatever these things are. But, you know, no biggie. I'm going to raise the camera a little bit. And you want to take this uh, swarm, we'll say this is a, we'll pretend this is a swarm missile launcher because I don't know what the hell else it could be. You just combine that with the little pulse cannon. They just clip together like so. You plug it to the side. Uh, like that. Then you take the missile launcher and you do the same. Just clip it to the side. Like like so, there we go. And there we go, we have our little attack chopper with all of his weapons, and yeah, that doesn't look half bad. Now, transformation, um, he does have a third mode, but it's, um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it correctly as far as transforming it, because I never use it. I never paid attention to how you do the third mode, and it's not that impressive anyway, which is why I never did it. But I'm going to try to do the third mode. If I remember correctly, what you want to do is you want to separate his legs from his arms like that. As you can see, everything tabs in super securely on the helicopter mode. When you clip the legs in, these tabs on his arms fold into these little slots on his legs and it holds it together super securely. I do like that. But anyway, the third mode for Whirl is like some kind of battle mech, I believe. I don't, again, I don't know because I don't use it. He's either in robot or helicopter mode for me. But, but it does get it halfway through the transformation. So yeah, just flip that down, extend the feet, clip it into place. Then uh, I think, what we want to do, what do we want to do? Well, one thing we want to do, we want to raise the camera again. I think we want to come back here. And, uh, honestly, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think that. And then you ship the legs back. And, uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain this is the third mode. Again, not that impressive. Do not care for it. So yeah, we're good. we're just gonna ignore that. Let's get down the robot mode. And as you can see, we pretty much have the legs on now. What you want to do is you want to bring it up on these double hinges here. The one thing I don't like about the figure is how thin these hinges are and how much you gotta force it to get it to bend. But you want the legs to bend at an angle like that. So he has the chicken legs going on, and you want to do that on both sides. Again, I don't like how you got to force it, but it is part of the transformation. Now what you want to do is you want to come up here, separate the arms from the side of the vehicle. You can just bring that out of the way, I guess. You want to come up here, pull this helicopter assembly apart. I think at the top would be the best way to do it. I can... Hold on, I'm having trouble with this. Trying to transform it and keep it in camera is a bit of a challenge. So you want to come up here, you want to... What am I messing up? Oh, I know what I'm messing up. You want to pull it up and out first because it tabs into there. That slot it goes in that little slot hole right there. And then you can pull it apart. Then you want to 
bring the whole assembly down. Open up the back. Get the propeller out of the way. Yeah, what you want to do with the propeller is just fold it in half. That simple. And what you want to do is you want to bring the tail end up. It's also on a double hinge. You can't, I think you can see. Yeah, you can see it in there. It's on a double hinge. Just bring it up flush against his back like so. I think I got it. No, I don't got it. Hold on. Alright, what am I doing wrong? There we go. I had something jammed on it. Yeah, just bring it all flush against his back like that. Bring the hinge here that the propeller is attached to. Move it sideways. And we're about done. If you haven't done it accidentally already, like I have, pull the head up on his little chicken neck there. Then you want to rotate the arms so that the detailing is facing down. Then you want to press them in. Pull the arms out. The lower arms out to be specific. I'm not sure if this symbol on his arm is the same one either. All I know is I did have to swap out the original one on his chest. Alright, we are about done. All that's left now is to pull out his claws, which is my favorite part of the transformation. Lots and lots of fun. And I think we got it all. So here we have the Generations Voyager Class Whirl in his robot mode and honestly for its time i think this is one of the better looking voyager class transformers at least from the generations line as he looks really really good very unique design particularly for an autobot as at first glance if it were not if it were not for these symbols standing out you would probably say this guy uh, ooh, excuse me this guy is a decepticon but I assure you, he is an Autobot, he is a Wrecker, and he is, he is kind of badass too, if you know about him in the comics like I do, character wise, he is a pretty impressive character. Zero shits given. Now we're going to take a closer look at this guy. At that very Shockwave-esque head sculpt. I do believe the head design itself is based on the IDW comics. You can see a little paint wear on mine because I have messed with it a lot and it's a little old, but you know, it's still in decent enough shape. He has, I don't know, you can't really see it, but he does have decent light piping. And if you don't want light piping, you can just fold that antenna forward and it covers it up. Take another closer look at the details. Uh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, you can open up the cockpit for some reason. You can't really fit anything in there, but you can do that. It's got some decent molded detail. Nice little molded in rivets on the panels. And the stickers are starting to wear on me, but you know, no big deal. Overall, he is not bad. Not a lot of paint to him, but he doesn't really need it. His con his con his flow of blue is fairly even. Now, as far as articulation goes, you can move this antenna forward and back. The neck is on a hinge, as well as a ball joint, I believe. Which we can look up quite a bit. You can look down quite a bit. You can rotate all the way around. Shoulders can move out about that far. Of course, if you bring it out, you can get a little more articulation out of it. Unfortunately, it's a little loose on mine, so in robot mode, I keep the arms pushed in. Drive it in all the way. Yeah, it's good enough. Anyway, I think this way is the way it's supposed to be instruction-wise anyway, so... Yeah, you can wiggle it on that hinge on either side. So if this is the way it's supposed to be, the arms go out that far, 
and do a full rotation. There is a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow with full bend. You can open and close the claws. I do love that. Nothing at the waist, just do the way he transforms. The hips can go up all the way. You can go back almost all the way. You kind of have to move it at an angle, but you can go back all the way. You can rotate the legs all the way around. He does have thigh rotation. Let's see, the legs can bend on that tight hinge, but I don't want to move it. They also bend on this hinge here. A little loose on mine, but no biggie. And there's nothing at the feet, unfortunately. What little you get, you do, you can get some decent poses with the guy, just from how he looks alone. And you can give him all of his weapons. What you want to do, you want to take the two rocket launchers, and you plug those onto his legs. Like so. Take the minigun. What I like to do is plug it in his left arm here. Make sure it's straight. There we go. Then we take my favorite weapon, this plasma cannon. And the way you attach that is you fold the claw back in. You can see there's this little tab here on top of his arm. That's going to hold in via friction these two little tabs here. As that plugs in right over where his claw would be. And there you have an arm cannon that looks like his hand turned into the weapon. And I love Transformers weapons like that. I love arm cannons. It is the coolest thing you can put on a Transformer. That's why I'm looking for that new... Studio Series Bumblebee, I'll definitely be getting that. And you can definitely expect me to review that thing too when I get it. Now, let's get the size comparisons out of the way. Gotta move him back because he is a little big. Being a Voyager class size. Now, comparisons. Here he is next to his fellow wrecker, Generations Springer came out around the same time and they're almost the same height I think, I think Springer's got a little more bulk and just a teeny bit more height than Whirl they don't look half bad together here he is next to Generations Cyclonus with IDW kit upgrade I don't remember the exact name of the kit I'm just basically guessing it. Here he is next to the Takara Generations Brawn. The Legends Glass one. Here he is next to Generations Deluxe Class Windblade. And again just so you have an idea how he compares to something a little more recent, here he is next to the Siege Deluxe Class Barricade. And that pretty much wraps this up. Now, as he stands, Whirl is... What did I do with that tape measure? I just had it. Oh, there it is. As he stands, Whirl is about six and a half inches. And at the time he was released, he was going for about $20, and I do believe you can still find them for that price. Even brand new, I think. Now, do I think he is worth picking up? I do indeed. I think he is aged very well. He is a perfect addition to any Generations collection. And, uh, yeah, if you can find him for a $20 to $30 price range definitely grab it. I think he is worth the buy. I mean, applying the stickers, if they're not already, not already on, is a bit of a pain in the ass, but still, it's a really good figure. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a nice comment, and enjoy the rest of your day. And join me next time. 
my next review will be, uh, ooh, it'll be something good. I can tell you that. It, I, I haven't decided what it'll be. It'll either be one of two new Studio Series figures I'm getting, or it'll be my first Titan class review. So until then, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.